Italian Cooking in association with Simply Good Food TV, where I'm really excited because today we're going to make Italian sub bread. Now before we get started, take a second and click that subscribe button in YouTube and download that Simply Good Food TV app. Every couple weekends or so, our kids find their way to the house and our grandkids as well, and we try to do something a little bit different each weekend. This weekend I made up my mind we were going to do uh, subs. You know, like a grilled sub sandwich or an Italian sub sandwich. And I thought to myself, anybody can run down to the store and buy some, uh, you know, just some bread to, to make subs on. I'm going to try to make the bread myself. Now, I can take no credit for this Italian sub loaf. It's a, a recipe I found online. I didn't make any changes. I'd never made it before. It did turn out great, but I get no credit for the recipe. But I, I, you know, I wanted to show how I made this bread because it, it was really good. It had a really good chew to it. Just something a little bit different than what you would buy at your local grocer. So let's just get started and take a look at our ingredients. Now we're going to take a look at the ingredients for our Italian sub rolls. This does use an overnight starter. In our overnight starter, we use three quarter cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, a half a cup of lukewarm water, and one eighth of a teaspoon of the active dry yeast. Not the instant yeast, but the active dry yeast. Our other ingredients are two thirds cup of water, and in that water I have dissolved two teaspoons of the instant yeast. Uh, we, gotta let that, we have to let that set for about 10 minutes. It's just about ready. We're also gonna add two and three quarter cups of unbleached all purpose flour, and one and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I am gonna take my salt, and just kind of mix it around in my flour to get it a little bit distributed because you, know, you don't want to be biting into a piece of bread and get a wonderful chunk of salt. Wouldn't that be wonderful? All right, our overnight starter. We're just going to go ahead and kind of scrape that down into our water. I've got my dough hook, or not my dough hook, I have my paddle on my stand mixer here. We'll make sure I get all of that starter. Is it, you know, when you use an overnight starter, it gives that bread a little more bite, gives it some more body. You can really smell the, the yeast coming out. And I'm giving up on that little wad of dough that's on there. All right, let's lock her in. Let's go ahead and get this mixing up. What we're wanting to do is just kind of break up that overnight starter a little bit. Looks like it's pretty good. So now what we're going to do is slowly mix in our flour, trying not to get it all over the place, which I'm being rather unsuccessful at. We're going to let that come together for a minute or two here, and then we'll switch to our dough hook. And here my mixer's starting to slow down just a little bit. It's time to go to the dough hook. Don't you love it when you've kind of dumped flour in and you put your KitchenAid mixer up and flour goes everywhere? You know what? That's all right. Part of the fun of making the uh, making bread is making a little bit of a mess. Let's be honest. All right. See if I can just throw things around here. Go hook on. Lock her in. And we'll probably let that go. We'll say two minutes. I'm probably going to bump it up to medium speed for just maybe 30 seconds and then down to a low speed. I'm going to check this real quick. It's looking a little bit too dry. And it is. That's going to be a very, very dry dough. So anytime it's a little bit dry, sprinkle in just a little bit of water. A little bit of water at a time. So let me grab behind me a little squirt of water. Don't add much. I mean, literally you're going to add a couple tablespoons, maybe. Maybe start with just a tablespoon. Now the problem is, is it's gonna kind of make it a little slimy as it's trying to knead that moisture into our dough. Now it has been about two minutes. The mixer's done as much as it's gonna do with this dough. Um, we're gonna to have to do this one by hand because I added that water and it was dry to begin with. So. We're not going to overwork it. We're just going to work it enough to make sure that we get all that moisture throughout our bread. So all I'm going to do is pull that out. Yeah, it's going to need, it, it needs work by hand. And when you, when you work your dough by hand, I'm going to kind of turn that in a little bit because of all that moisture on the outside. 
again, it's push away, pull back, and just kind of spin it, push away, pull back, push away, pull back, push away, pull back, and kind of stretch it over. That dough is ready to go. So what we're going to do with this dough is I'm going to put it in a lightly oiled bowl covered with plastic. First try is 90 minutes. Our Italian sub dough has risen and is ready. So I'm going to pull the plastic off. Love that smell. Love that smell. I'm going to put down a little bit of flour here. Just so the dough doesn't spick, spick, stick, if I can get that big word out, doesn't stick to my countertop. Both hands floured up. Let's get this dough turned out. Now our goal is going to be to cut this into six equal pieces. This ought to be fun. For this dough, what we're going to do is really what we're making. Remember, these are going to be Italian subs because I've got the family coming over tomorrow and I thought it would be neat to make um, some you know, Italian subs, maybe like a little mufalada or just a, really just a grilled Italian sub with a variety of different meats. So all we're gonna do, let's get a little flour down here on our parchment paper. Boom, nice and high. All we're gonna do, we're gonna put these into about, oh, I don't know, what's that, five inches? And we're just going to kind of flatten them out a little bit because they will rise more in the middle. I'm not going to worry about over working the dough very much because it's just not that important to work this dough. Just try to get them consistent thickness throughout. Good enough. Oh, those are going to touch. We want to spread those out because they, they will probably about double in size. So these are going to rise for about 45 minutes while they're rising. Go ahead and turn your oven to 425. Once I get all these shaped and they rise, now I'm going to cover these with a uh, a damp, a warm, damp towel. But once they've risen and my oven's at 425, there is one little finishing step that we'll do before we pop them in the oven. So in 45 minutes, we'll top. Our Italian sub bread is done rising. Ooh, look at this. Now, I did make a double batch of these uh, off camera, you know, in between shots and whatnot. I went ahead and made a, 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 a second batch. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put half of these in the oven, and the other half I'm going to let set until uh, the first batch gets done. What I'm going to do, which I'll do off camera, uh, is cut, some of the, cut the paper so I can get these in there. But at any rate, Let's talk about what we gotta do to finish these subs. What we're gonna do, take a razor blade and just kind of score right in the middle of each of these. That way it'll give them some room to kind of puff up and let out some of that moisture. So, and it, it can be tricky to do this, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Um, a lot of times the dough wants to stick. These are nice rustic loaves. Rustic meaning not shaped nicely. <laughs> so anyway, We'll go ahead and score these. Now, what we're going to do that I've got these scored. I have an egg wash here. This is just, I got three egg whites and then I put in just a little splash of water. I'm gonna mix this up. Every time I turn on the camera, one of my animals wants out. Now the dog wants out, but she can wait. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our egg wash and we're gonna brush all of these with an egg wash, just like this. I'm going to do that to all of these, and then these go in the oven at 425 for 20, 20 to 25 minutes. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'll show a picture of my oven right now, how I've got things set up, and you'll see there's a little uh, quarter size baking sheet. That quarter size baking sheet will get some water put in it, about a half a cup of water right at the beginning. That will help the crust to form. I'm going to go ahead and get two more of these ready. Get these in the oven, 25 minutes. When they're done, we'll be back. I just checked my Italian subs. There's a few of them that are ready to come out of the oven and a few I gotta adjust. I'm gonna grab the ones that are ready to come out. They came out really good. Let me pull the paper out. 
you know, the dough sticks so much to that parchment paper, but boy, it just comes off so easy once it's been baked. Now there's a couple other that are looking really good. I got six in there on the stone, so I'm gonna adjust the other two towards the back. So here's the other two that were ready to come out. There's two more that were kind of towards the front of the oven that aren't quite ready yet. But those are a thing of beauty, look at those. I can't believe that I actually made these. <laughs> They're beautiful. Um, a couple of them a little misshapen. We'll call that rustic. I'm going to let these cool for a few minutes and we're going to sacrifice the one that looks like a boomerang to see how these turned out. My Italian subbread has cooled just enough so we can give it a taste. I am... Oh, I love... You hear that nice crust on it? Oh my gosh. I'm just going to cut it crossways, kind of like I would do a ciabatta bread. Um, nice and airy. You can see we've got some good bubbles. I really like the way that bread turned out. I'm really happy with that. Tomorrow we're going to be making some nice Italian sandwiches with this. Uh, it's going to be good. Now I'm going to butter up two little pieces. Because my beautiful wife is sitting over there working on her computer and I'm sure she'd love a bite. Let's give this a try. See how it turns out. Mmm. Mmm, it's good. That egg wash on top. Gives it a quick little crunch. Now the spread does have salt in it, and of course the butter does too. So it's packed full of flavor. This is going to go over really, really well tomorrow. I like this. Mm, 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 mm. So I highly recommend this. Real easy to do. Um, you know, and if you're having guests over, and, you know, it's something special. It's so much better to do this than to just go down to your local supermarket and buy some, you know, off-the-shelf Italian sub buns. Now, if you have a, a good baker uh, in town where you get this, go for it. But this is just something a little special. Highly recommend it. But at any rate, thank you so much for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. Most importantly, click that uh, subscribe button in YouTube and download that Simply Good Food TV app. Thanks for watching and ciao.